So you only have penetrative sex with your husband, but you have six other partners who are monogamous to you, right? So then does that mean that they don't have sex at all? Or do you allow them to have sex with other people? Do you have different rules for different partners, excluding your husband, of course, which I understand is a different relationship? Yes, that's a very good question. Yes, I have different rules for different people. And I was telling you at the beginning that out of the seven relationships, they are not all just as intimate as um, uh, the next one. So mm -hmm. with my husband, he's my primary, the boy who lives with me, uh, next to me, actually, mm -hmm. he is also my partner. Actually, I keep him locked in chastity all the time. And this is the key from his chastity device. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, most of my partners are locked in chastity most of the time and they are not allowed to have um, sex of any kind with anyone. However, mm -hmm. uh, two of my partners are married and they are allowed, I don't know if they do, but they are allowed to have sex with their wives. Actually, this is a rule that I have. I believe that if a man is in another relationship, I prefer the wife to know. And if she doesn't know, I want her to be treated at least as good as they are treating me. Because this is the concept of matriarchy. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so interesting. So do these two partners that are married, do they, do their wives know? Uh, yes, one of them is my first partner, Medor, that I was telling you about. I'm in a relationship with him for 12 years, I think. Mm -hmm. And the wife knows. Um, they are rather old. I don't think they, they have any sexual intercourse anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, she knows about me. Actually, they, they used to play BDSM uh, at the beginning of their relationship. And then she decided mm -hmm. she, she is not into it. Mm -hmm. and um, allowed him to, to go and see a dominatrixes. Um, he is allowed most of the time, him in particular, uh, when we play, he's allowed to masturbate in front of me. Other mm -hmm. men are allowed to ejaculate. Um, I masturbate them with my hand or with mm -hmm. the use of sexual toys or maybe with a foot job. Um, Sometimes with a couple, three, three, four, four of them are allowed to offer me oral services, licking uh, my ass yeah. or, or my mm -hmm. sanctum. Uh, actually, for the sanctum, only my husband at this moment. I used to have another one, but uh, not anymore. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so yes, it's very specific. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's so in that's so interesting. So. God, I have like so many questions. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So you say that you have them locked in chastity. Are they actually wearing chastity belts or are we talking more of like a, like a mental chastity? Both. Um, my, th of course I like the idea of a, of a chastity device, mm -hmm. but I think, and over the years having all this experience that actually the only chastity that matters is the mental chastity. Mm -hmm. Basically, if I give them permission to touch themselves, if I give them permission to ejaculate, they will. Otherwise, they will not. And it's a trust, of course. I cannot make sure he will. they will not do it. Uh, it it's a trust thing. They trust my judgment. They trust that from obtaining uh, and postponing the climax, when they will be allowed, it will be more pleasant, more intense, more meaningful. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, and I think it happens a lot with men nowadays, because porn is so widely available and it's so easy to, to see it, to just have a masturbation before you go to sleep, to, to make that orgasm not to matter anymore. And I think it's mm -hmm. a pity because it can be such an important, amazing um, sensation if you just work for it a bit more. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, it's like if you eat cake all the time, then it's just 
cake, but if you only have cake on your birthday, then it's like very yes. special. So yes, I understand that. So do men ever uh, <laughs> masturbate without your permission? And if they do, do they call you or like tell you and then like they have to be punished? Um, and what are your rules for that? Like, is there a situation where if somebody breaks the rules enough times and you let them go? I will definitely not let go someone just because he masturbated without permission. However, I mean, that is not important. And actually, it, it's a subject that I am very willing to negotiate a lot, depending on the person that I am with. And um, for example, uh, my husband is allowed to have once a week, one orgasm. And uh, it's like uh, Friday, it's our date night, which is now. <laughs> and uh, usually he's I'm ruining. To... Am I ruining your date night? <laughs> oh, after I talked with you about all this, I'm going downstairs where he's waiting, horny. <laughs> 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 this is the foreplay. <laughs> I'm sorry if this is not consensual for you, but in my mind, I have lots of non-consensual <laughs> fantasies. Are you kidding like me? That. This is great. This is great. I've never been the foreplay to somebody else's session. So <laughs> this is awesome. I love it. <laughs> oh, I'm all red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, uh, sorry. So your husband's allowed to orgasm once a week. Um, mm -hmm. tonight, uh, tonight, yes. tonight, <laughs> maybe, and, well, maybe I, you are the boss. So, um, yes, exactly. He, he, I have a rule. He, he must make me climax at least 10 times before he will be allowed to have an, an orgasm and there will be a ruined orgasm most of the time. So <laughs> wait, 10 times in one night or just like over the span of the week? Oh, th that doesn't matter. It can be one night. He's really good. He was very bad at the beginning when I met him, but now he's really good. Yes, I can climax wow. 10 times. That's not possible for me. I can't do it more than once. Like once I come, I'm like, get away from me. Don't touch me. I'm like, I'm done. Like there is not a second one. There's definitely not a 10th one. So that's amazing. <laughs> I think I'm lucky because the first one is harder to achieve, but after that, they come like that. It's really yeah. nice. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah, it's just interesting. Women are so different, you know, like I know, I know other women who can like have multiple orgasms. Um, Should I go back very... about the orgasm? Yes. Uh, yes. Sorry. Because sorry, we'll... yes. We um, so, so, so sit, my living boy was complaining. He has an app where he keeps the like, when was the last time? And time to time, he's telling me it was 87 days and 12 hours since <laughs> my last ejaculation. I had three ejaculations in one day. And one time it was 450 something. That's because I don't keep track and I really mm -hmm. do not care. I mean, sometimes I play with him, I tease him, but if I feel like, you know, it's not the time I will just put him back in chastity. And mm -hmm. he started to complain about that a little bit first, just hints. Then mm -hmm. he told me that, oh, other boys get to come every week. Why I can, uh, a little bit of passive aggression, like mm -hmm. most submissive men do. And I decided to give him tasks. And I said, how, how many workouts do you want to have in a week? Let's do this task. And I wanted him to do by himself to see what is the perfect number of organs for him. But I didn't want to go to the trouble. Uh, so he had to masturbate first once a week, then twice a week and so on. But he, he never took the chances. I would ask him, so you did it the way I told you? Oh, no, I was busy with this and that. And I said, okay, if you don't want to do it, then <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe you don't need it. So it depends. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, so you're open to negotiation because I think one thing that, um, you know, I come across, uh, when I speak to people who are in BDSM that I think a lot of outsiders don't understand is that there's always like a boundary and consensual negotiation before play happens. So you let the guys kind of tell you like how far they're willing to go, what they need. And then you, do you, how much do you adjust? according to like what they want? Actually, 
I'm willing to adjust the relationship to make it work. Mm -hmm. And I'm always trying to renegotiate what's going on in our relationship. And I always try to take more control, making sure that they, they, are, they want to give me that control. And mm -hmm. I think that's very important. And I think that's why I have so many very successful, very long relationships, because I, I have rules, of course, but I understand that each person is different. And when I choose to be in a relationship with somebody, I was looking for different personalities, people who can bring me different things in my life, happiness in a different shape and form than the other one, because I don't want to have uh, three similar <laughs> husbands. I want mm -hmm. want to be an introvert and want to be an extrovert and want to be a little bit feminine and want to be very masculine and so on. So I appreciate their unicity and I try to make them be the best version of themselves, as happy as they can be, so they can make me happy. But when it comes to play, I'm not willing to negotiate. And actually with most of my relationships, it's the ones that are really important and the trust is there and we have our test, uh, blood test done. So, so basically uh, anything goes, mm -hmm. I'm expecting that they would, they would trust me so much that I have right of life and death over them. If, if mm -hmm. you understand what it means, of course, I want them to be good and I want them to be healthy and I don't want them to be in danger. But I'm expecting if I want something to happen, like I want you to suck my husband dick now. Mm -hmm. He must do it. Mm -hmm. Although that might which not could be, be his which fantasy. could be life and death for some. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I test the waters <laughs> before I would take them there. Right. <laughs> I, yes, it, it's a question of, of trust. Basically, I want the I, I'm negotiating the relationships, but not so much the play because mm -hmm. it's very important for me to know that they trust me so much, they trust my judgment so much, and they trust that I know about them more than they know about themselves. Because very often with submissive men, that's the case. And I help them discover fantasies and feelings and sensations, which maybe they never thought about it. 